Good evening. Master of Ceremonies, please permit me to accept the protocol already established, which I do gratefully. Good evening again. So lovely to see everybody in this full room. <sighs> when I reflect on the relatively early days of commercial litigation in the Virgin Islands, I cannot help but reflect also on the admonition that we must press on regardless. You see, the establishment of the commercial court took well over 15 years from idea to inception. When I was admitted to the bar in 1997, commercial litigation in the Virgin Islands, as we know it today, was in its infancy. And being myself an infant at the bar, I grew with it. In those days, there was one judge, and I mean one judge period, not one judge for the commercial court, just one judge. There were about seven mostly small law firms. The Court of Appeal came once a year and sat only in the mornings and sometimes not for the entire week. The fax machine was king and bundles and skeleton arguments were not provided for in any rules of court or practice directions. Also, cell phones were quite uncommon, much less those that allowed you to read emails if you even had email anywhere and anytime. It was a different place. However, the international business companies and the BVI's register of companies were coming of age. And disputes, thankfully for us lawyers, were emerging. First, a trickle, then a steady stream, and now I believe it is fair to say that they are fast and furious. But who is complaining? Back then, however, the sole judge, and later too, and I really don't know how they did it, but I think I learned a little bit from Justice Blenman just now. Among them, Justice Ephraim Georges and Justice Susie Devon, now both of blessed memory. Justices Benjamin, Rollins, Barrow, Charles, Smith, Olivetti, juggled the criminal, civil, and commercial lists. In fact, there was only two lists then. There was the civil list and the criminal list, and the commercial matters were on the civil list. And they juggled them all. I just, it boggles my mind even today. Successive registrars and their staff, as well as the court reporting unit, which was then under the leadership of Ms. Janie Stout, provided invaluable service and were incessantly harassed by people like me in my young eagerness with increasingly large filings, requests for urgent hearings, and overnight transcripts. The growing commercial caseload was placing a big burden on the court system, and something really had to be done. From as far back as the 10th of April, 1996, the BVI Bar Association appointed three of its members, Mr. Joseph Archibald, Queen Counsel, now also of blessed memory as its chairman, and Mr. Richard Peters, and Mr. Paul Webster, as he was in those days, as a committee to consider the proposal for the establishment of a commercial court in and for the territory of the Virgin Islands. Shortly afterwards, and even before that committee submitted its report to the president at the time, Mr. Michael Regal, Screen Council, they saw the audience of the then Chief Minister, Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, also of blessed memory, and also of the then Director of Financial Services, Mr. Robert Mathavius. Mr. Mathavius supported the establishment wholeheartedly on the ground that there was need for it and it was important for the development of the territory. On the 11th of June, 1998, the committee submitted its report. Then, 
In February 2003, Executive Council, now Cabinet, formed an ad hoc committee to review the present arrangements for commercial litigation in the territory and recommend such changes as they considered desirable. That committee also submitted a report in July 2004. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> then, in late 2004, early 2005, the government established the BVI Court Review Committee that my colleague, Mr. Dennis, just spoke about. Both myself and our able chairman were members of that committee, chaired by Mr. Chono Jallo, Queen's Counsel, who was then Attorney General. By that time, and I have a lot of stories that I can tell you, but I'm limiting them. By that time, the energy surrounding the establishment of the commercial court had thrown up three options, each of which had a very strong lobby. Firstly, that the court stay within the Eastern Caribbean system and establish a division of that court dedicated to commercial matters and based in Tortola. The second option was to stay within the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court system, but create a separate high court that would deal with commercial matters, and that was called the hybrid option. And thirdly was the option that the BVI leave the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court entirely and establish a separate judicial branch for the Virgin Islands within which there would be a commercial court, and that was the standalone option. Under the auspices of the committee, the government retained a multidisciplinary team led by Professor Richard Corns of the University of Essex, and including again, or Paul Webster, Queen's Counsel, he was still then, Queen's, were you Queen's Counsel? Yes, you were. Yes. Yes, he was then Queen's Counsel, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> to evaluate the existing court system in the territory and advise on the three reform options. Option A, the model that we have now, was recommended by the team and accepted by the government, who then gamely came up with the funding and partnered with the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court to establish the commercial division, which is now housed in what I still call the former First Pennsylvania Bank building <laughs> on Main Street. By that time, I was the director of the London office and was again tasked with helping to identify another consultant and this one was for court design. I had the privilege that time of meeting with Mr. Edward Bannister socially, and then officially after he was appointed as the first judge of the commercial division of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. While all this was happening, the commercial bar was growing steadily. The number, width, and breadth of cases before the court had high stakes, and were relentlessly challenging with complex and sometimes novel characteristics. The commercial court was finally established on the 9th of May, 2009, and the court building was officially opened at its current location later that year. Very soon, the BVI bar exemplified the old tourist board slogan from yesteryear that some of you may, re may remember. Yes, we are different. Legal practitioners from all corners of the globe were admitted, bringing not only their personal diversity, but servicing a diverse clientele with diverse disputes and enriching the practice of law in the territory, in jurisprudence, and in technique. I am confident that we can all concede that the court needs the support of the government, the administration and work of the judiciary and its teams, the professionalism of the bar, and of course, clients. The importance of each constituent part was most evident in September 2017, when hurricanes Irma and Maria devastated our islands. The commercial court barely skipped a beat as government, the judiciary under the leadership of our Chief Justice Dame Janice, the bar, the registry, and our regional host, the government of St. Lucia, rallied together to relocate the commercial court to St. Lucia until December 2017, by which time, in my capacity as acting permanent secretary in the Premier's office, 
I was asked to ensure that it came back home. <laughs> in terms of time, the process of establishing the court, the commercial court in the Virgin Islands has took almost 15 years. In fact, it took more than 15 years. It is standing the test of time, trials, and tribulations. It is a resilient court. It is a significant milestone that we celebrate today and that we can all be gathered here this evening to mark this occasion is a testament that come what may, we should press on regardless. I look forward to the 20th anniversary celebrations and to seeing all of you there. Thank you.